Hello, this is the seventh lecture of Triple E 107. This will also have three parts. In this lecture, we'll be continuing our discussion on continuous wave modulation. And in this lecture, we'll be talking about mainly about angle continuous wave modulation. And this is the, I guess, in terms of radio popularity, this is actually what is used to transmit high fidelity audio signals. Anyway. So, this is our call, uh, the different types of continuous wave modulation. There's linear and angle continuous wave modulation. For linear modulation, you vary the instantaneous amplitude. And we talked about it in detail in the previous lecture. But for angle modulation, you, you uh, modulate the angle. You change the characteristics of the angle based on the message signal. So, if you're linear... Uh, continuous wave modulation varies the amplitude with respect to time centered around some carrier Fc of t. Your angle modulation has a constant amplitude but the phase varies with time. Right? And with this, you create an angle continuous wave modulation scheme. So this is the expression that we got earlier. So recall first a, ba a real bandpass signal. We talked about this in the previous lecture. Where your phi C of T here is equal to this. We define the instantaneous frequency as follows. It's basically 1 over 2 pi. Oops. 1 over 2 pi times the derivative of theta C right here. So for angle CW modulation, there are two types, phase modulation or PM and frequency modulation or FM. And I'm sure you've heard FM a lot. Okay. For your phase modulation, your instantaneous angle, phi of t here, varies linearly with respect to the message M of t. For frequency modulation, your frequency, instantaneous frequency varies linearly with respect to M of t. So let's look at phase modulation first. The phase modulation signal can be expressed as this. You have a constant amplitude, constant frequency, and a uh, phase that varies linearly with respect to message. K sub p here is called the phase sensitivity. 2 pi fct is the angle of the unmodulated carrier, and fc is your carrier frequency. Okay. So some conditions, your uh, Kp times the absolute value of M of t should be less than 180 degrees or pi to prevent phase ambiguities. So the instantaneous frequency of your PM signal varies with the rate of change of the message. So if we substitute this to this expression, the instantaneous frequency is equal to the carrier frequency plus 1 over 2 pi times the phase sensitivity times the rate of change of your message signal. So your frequency actually varies centered around Fc of t. If your message signal does not vary with time, that means it's just constant, this will be zero, and your PM signal will just continue transmitting a sinusoid of a constant frequency, F sub c. The frequency modulation looks like this. The message signal uh, is used to vary the instantaneous frequency. So your instantaneous frequency is equal to this, where Kf is called the frequency sensitivity, and again, Fc is the carrier frequency. Your Kf M of t is upper bounded by Fc to ensure that the frequency is always positive. And typically, we uh, have Kf uh, M of t much, much less than Fc to preserve the bandpass nature of the FM signal. Okay. So the, the instantaneous angle of the FM signal can be expressed as this. You just integrate the uh, this expression okay, and you get this value. You have an initial phase, you have your uh, carrier frequency, and this is the effect of an FM signal to your uh, uh, instantaneous angle or instantaneous phase. 
So, uh, if with T0 is taken such that the initial phase is 0, then we'll simplify your phase, uh, your phase uh, signal, phi of t, to be equal to this expression right here. And the FM signal can now be formulated as follows. Okay? And just a note that uh, this is normalized to 1. So, normally, we assume that m of t has no DC component. So why? If uh, m of t has a DC component, this integral, okay, this integral approaching, if as t approaches infinity, this integral will not uh, diverge, uh, will, will converge rather, will not uh, converge rather. It will, it will, uh, in, uh, sorry, it will keep on increasing which makes the signal FC increase to, uh, sorry, in, which makes uh, FC increase to, uh, sorry, which makes the angle inside your cosine carrier uh, diverge to infinity if it has a DC component. So if, if it has no DC component, then the integral will not diverge. And if it has a DC component, your instantaneous frequency will be some, your center frequency rather, will be some F delta. So it would cause a shift in the center frequency, okay, which is equal to this, right? And that would mean that your radio, must, your receiver must adjust so you'll be able to capture your FM wave, okay? So the comparison between an FM and a PM signal is shown in this table right here. Like the instantaneous angle and the instantaneous frequency are both compared. And you can see that there is some form of relationship between them. So if you uh, if you if you put if you put uh, if you put the derivative of the message in a frequency modulator you will result in a phase modulated wave. Similarly, if you put an integral to a phase modulator, if you put the integral of the message in a phase modulator, then the resulting signal is an FM signal. And that's the relationship between the phase modulation and a frequency modulation. Okay? And uh, a demonstration will be given to you in the lecture using Simulink, right? So I'll leave that during the lecture. Something to look forward to. So this is what I've shown you earlier. Right? This is what I've shown you earlier. If you uh, put your M of T in an integrator and put it in a phase modulator, you get an FM wave. If you put M of T in a differentiator, put it in a frequency modulator, you get a PM wave. So there is a relationship between the two of them. All right. So some properties. The good thing about FM, or sorry, angle modulation in general, is that the power of your transmission will be confined only by, it will only be defined rather by the amplitude of the carrier signal. It won't be defined by the power of the message signal. Okay? So the average power of the transmitted signal is constant at one half AC squared. Excuse me. However, your uh, modulation process is nonlinear. So it's nonlinear. If you have a sum of two messages, then uh, then your uh, if we put this in a frequency or in a frequency modulator or a phase modulator, it will result into this expression, which is not the sum of the individual expressions when you put M1 and M2 into a frequency or a phase modulator individually. So clearly here in this example, you can see that the S of T here, which results from the message M of T, is not equal to S1 of T plus S2 of T. And this is because it's a nonlinear modulation scheme. Okay. Property 3 is the irregularity of zero crossings. We can use this actually to recover a phase modulated or a frequency modulated signal. Okay. Uh, this is a consequence of allowing theta sub c to become dependent of the message signal. 
So the message signal kind of defines where when your signal, when your FM or PM signal crosses the zero uh, threshold of your uh, of your wave of your uh, here, here you go the zero threshold or the t-axis. Okay. So the information content is actually defined by the zero crossings of your FM wave. This means that the FM wave or uh, the PM wave is less vulnerable to additive noise, which only corrupts the amplitude of your signal. Okay? So it just increases the sensitivity of the uh, phase sensitivity or frequency sensitivity of your FM or PM wave to improve the received signal. And you will see this in a future lecture when we compare the different modulation schemes. Property four is the difficulty of visualization. So you can't really easily see the message signal's shape from an angle modulation scheme. So if you compare your amplitude modulation, you can see the shape of the message signal. But for the FM, we cannot see the shape of the message. We can only see a variation in the zero crossings. Okay, And this can be attributed to the nonlinearity of the modulation. So that is the basics of your angle continuous wave modulation. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section again. So I hope you're not tired of that phrase, right? Of that sentence or whatnot. Thank you for listening. See you next meeting.